Good afternoon and welcome to Team Ford and the strategy case done on the Dynamic Shuttle in India. Uh, brought to you by Teresa Adams, Deisha Jones, Sandy Elena Quindo, and Adam Scar. Hi, my name is Deasia. Our group is Ford Motor Company, and I just want to give you a little bit of background on it before we get started. So Ford was founded in 1903 by Henry Ford in Detroit, Michigan. The purpose was to create cars and mass production, therefore making them more affordable. Uh, the man shift happened with the, when their Model T was created in 1909 which they could they produced 10,000 models. Also in World War I, they used their facilities to aid the American government in producing things for the war. Also in 1918, Henry retired and left his son in charge. Okay, during the, the 1920s, there was financial hardship as well as an economic crash. So Ford was able to recuperate and also remain alive by selling off its inventory as well as buying the railroad industry that supplied its or that transported its goods and therefore they were able to um, pre reduce their transit time by one third releasing 28 million dollars so competition arose and also during this time Ford was able to organize its employees to create one of their most successful cars, which is the Mustang, and that was produced in 1964, and they sold 500,000 in the first 18 months. So the Clean Air Act kind of changed the way Ford was creating its cars because they were then required to produce cars with less uh, that emitted less pollutants. So they were able to partner with Japanese manufacturers and they created the Linux and also during this time they were able to gain a 25% stake in Mazda and also during the 1990s they acquired Lincoln Motor Company, Jaguar Cars and Volvo. So during the early times they were able to aid the American wars that were going on in World War I as well as they were able to stay afloat in economic downturns by um, making some smart decisions and financially and and still they were able to produce cars that were affordable and they were beating record numbers so just to get into what they stand for and who they are Ford's mission is one team one plan one goal and the objective here is to be able to aggressively restructure when necessary to increase their profits as well as accelerate forward to create, create new products and um, to go further globally and their main purpose in doing this and their main the main reason they are able to do this is because they are unified the structure of the company um, stands on unity and that's why they have been able to be relevant for uh, over 100 years their vision statement is people working together as a lean global enterprise for automotive leadership so their corporate social responsibility strategies have been to aid in their employees, their customers, their investors, and others, and as well as satisfy these uh, individuals and their desire to be the best global enterprise for automotive leadership is definitely a goal that is within reach because at this current moment, they are the fifth biggest in the world, the second largest US-based automobile manufacturer behind GM. So they are on the right track to becoming what, the, um, what they are desiring to be. Ford's core values. So their focus is great products, strong business, and a better world. So the product should entail these four qualities, which is quality, safety, green, and smart. So they want to create, create cars that produce less uh, carbon uh, or less CO2 emissions and, and they want to be able to use less water as well as have better worker rights. So they commit to innovation by creating smart technology or products that have smart technology. And they're also donating and they have donated 1.5 billion to economic development, energy security and environmental sustainability. And they're also able to give their employees uh, better pension plans and retirement options. 
So also for ethics and co corporate social responsibility and sustainability, they have taken a strong interest in the community and they have made a commitment to com uh, better the community through financial efforts as well as volunteering efforts. So they have created new jobs, which are about 28,000 jobs since 2012. They've invested money into their plans to become better. They've also uh, de devo devoted themselves to global diversity and inclusion, and their their volunteer corps has been a pillar in their volunteering efforts and is giving countless hours yearly, as well as their Ford and Lincoln dealers are able to give millions as well as donate their hours as well to good causes and nonprofits. Um, also, one notable thing here is that they have capitalized on the Electronic Industry Citizen Coalition membership, their first um, automobile company to join, and they can use this platform to further their corporate social responsibility efforts. Hello, my name is Trace Adams, and I'll be doing the SWOT analysis for Ford. SWOT stands for Strengths, Weaknesses, Opportunities, and Threats. The first strength that Ford exhibits is a strong brand image. This is depicted by Ford's excellent financial performance and global presence. Their strong brand image contributes to producing attractiveness and customer loyalty. It also gives them a competitive edge above the competitors, which allows them to charge premium pricing. Their second strength is a large and loyal customer base. They have a customer base that exists globally. Their wide range of products caters to a variety of customers. And in 2014, they won the IHS Automo Automotive Loyalty Award for the most loyal customers. Ford has loyalty rewards that retains the interest and purchasing power of their customers. Their third strength is a strong research and development culture. The research and development culture gives opportunities to make vehicles that suit consumer trends. And in 2011, they spent $5.3 billion on research and development costs. R&D enhances the company's innovation process, which creates efficient growth. And research and development improves performance, safety, and customer satisfaction. Moving on to weaknesses. Their product recalls. Ford has a high quantity of product recalls. In 2015 and 2016, Ford recalled an estimated 694,000 vehicles. Manufacturing and design problems were contributing factors. This has the potential to affect customer trust and long-term purchasing power. And a high number of product recalls could tarnish the company's brand image. Their second weakness that Ford has is high operational costs. They have higher than average, excuse me, they have higher than average employee con compensation rates, which contributes to the high operational costs. In 2017, the CEO, Jim Hackett, earned $16.7 million, and the medium wage for employees, which includes salary, benefits, and other compensation, is $87,783. Because of the high operational costs, Ford must charge higher prices for vehicles to offset these costs. Their next weakness is the decline in unit sales. The automobile industry is suffering from a downward trend in sales as a whole. Because of the decline in unit sales, Ford has to, had to close some of their production facilities in Europe, and they just announced the cutback of North American production down to two cars. The lack of interest in vehicles except their trucks, SUVs, and crossovers is the blame for the decline in unit sales. Moving on to opportunities. An opportunity that exists for Ford is the investment into diesel and hybrid cars. Diesel and hybrid cars popularity is on the rise. 
Competitors such as Kia, Nissan, and Hyundai, Hyundai have already embraced the trend, and this could increase market share and profits. A second opportunity for Ford is the investment in autonomous cars. It's the newest trend in automobiles. Customer satisfaction does exist for these types of vehicles. And like diesel and hybrid cars, this could increase demand in company sales. And the third opportunity that exists for Ford is investing in the growing Asian market. There is a tremendous boom that exists in the Asian automobile industry. Southeast Asia is a promising area for opportunity. There is a low number of people who currently own vehicles in Asia, which contributes to the opportunity. And not only do they have the opportunity to sell cars, but also to manufacture cars in the Asian market. Moving on to threats. The first threat that Ford has is competition. Ford's biggest competitors are General Motors and Toyota. The battle for market share in the US has never been higher and high-tech brands such as Tesla entering the market creates a huge threat for Ford. The second threat that Ford is facing is macroeconomic risk. This is beyond the control of the company. Economic slowdowns leads to fluctuations in the automobile industry, causing a decline in sales. And currently, there is an uncertain political environment. The next risk, or excuse me, the next threat that Ford is facing is government regulations. This is also beyond the control of the company. Regulations affect how cars look, how they are designed, what safety features they have, how they affect the environment, and so forth. Ford could face serious fines if they are non-compliant with government regulations. And these regulations may inc increase operating costs, which could potentially lower profits. Good afternoon. My name is Adam Scar, and I will be working on the strategic approach that Ford should be using to implement their shuttle program in this case study. The strategic approach for improving strategy is to correct weaknesses and deficiencies that impair pursuit of important market opportunities or heighten vulnerability or external threats. A couple of the focuses that Ford needs to realize is the smart mobility applications and the algorithm development. The smart mobility programs is a current trend in personal transportation it is used in the smartphone industry to link the consumer to a mode of travel. This is a new market for Ford and it's outside of their core competency. So Ford in their selection needs to be able to select the proper algorithm and go with their choice of company that has already been proven to be successful in this. There are two types of strategic actions that Ford is actually going to be doing in parallel, and there's actually a third part to this as a strategic action that you could consider. And the first questions that Ford needed to answer was, does any of the Ford prospects have any best fit the needs of Ford? What characteristics would ensure a successful launch of a dynamic shuttle in India? And the strategic actions that we have selected for Ford is what they were looking into as the joint venture. We decided that Ford's best interest is to go with the Shuttle X company according to the matrix that Ford was using by their global strategy team. So we call this plan A. And some of the reasons as you can see for the pros are the algorithm flexibility. They operate out of 50 plus cities. They have high customer retention and the selections for the decisions were based off of a uh, shuttle X. We decided the reasons were weighed against John Cassessa's question 
that he has for his global strategy team, which partner would be the best match for Ford in terms of a business model growth and the operational efficiency to successfully launch a dynamic shuttle in or for a piloting country in India. Um, the business model, the reason why Shuttle X seems that they're more fitting is their current business model it operates like a shy, uh, shared ride service. Um, it's currently designed to replace the hailed taxi uh, service. This benefits Ford because Shuttle X has seasoned operators that are familiar with utilizing um, a ride sharing application to reach its clients uh, like Dynamic Shuttle would like to have. Um, also for growth, seeing that Ford is looking to service many cities in India, that Shuttle X has already been able to operate on a very large scale with 50 plus cities. The third part of technology is that Shuttle X has the advantage in this area, um, especially since that they are operating out of 50 cities. Ford's uh, requirement for the applicability and the flexibility of their algorithm is so that they can establish new locations, uh, mapping, and um, the routes that people would be taking. And seeing how Shuttle X has managed 50 cities, it just seems feasible that Dynamic Shuttle would be more of a better fit for a Shuttle X. Uh, operational efficiency, it's described in the other competencies in the competency matrix uh, for Dynamic Shuttle, prospective partners. Um, we'll go ahead and go there. That um, there's three categories, fleet management, customer service, and the support and help desk are all fit a fitting for the operational efficiency that Ford needs to go with in the Dynamic Shuttle. Uh, Shuttle X is the only company that has identified or is identified with a green indication that they are fully successful in the customer defined areas. The area in which they're lacking on is pretty much where Ford's uh, core competency relies and that's in the fleet management part where they can perform or provide the training for services of the vehicles and anything that needs to be taken care of. Um, if Shuttle X is not the partner of choice to be, then we will go on to contingency plan B, which is in riders. So riders is, you know, our contingency of same uh, str strategy using a joint venture with riders. Um, and they also work like Shuttle X, that they are a ride sharing company. And it's an attractive a company to conduct a joint venture with because they are more willing to franchise. And franchising is something that Ford was looking to have to kind of ease down the possibility of maintenance for vehicles. Hello, my name is Sandy Lena Quendo and I will be covering the strategic execution and performance monitoring. For the strategy execution, we have developed a strategy implementation for the joint venture with Shutlex, consisting of four parts. Part A is an execution list. For this plan to be executed effectively, both companies must be in the same sheet of music. Shutlex will provide the access to the local market and knowledge of the local rules, while Ford will focus on providing top-notch American technology and brand recognition. Ford managers will train with Shutlex managers. Once management is trained, they will train their individual staff. All training is required to be completed prior to launch date. For Ford staff must also train and be certified to work in India. Abilities. There will be an implication an application developed for customers to request services. This application will serve a dual purpose. It will provide the company with customer requests while it gathers customer relations data. That data will be studied further so we can improve our services. Part C is instituting adequate policies and procedures. 
Policies and procedures must be both U.S. and India standards. Driver, drivers must be of legal age and the vehicle must be insured. Infants must be placed on a carrier to transport and everyone must wear a seatbelt. Allocating a budget is the last part of the execution. The budget will cover training, application development, and operational cost. In regards to training, everyone will have to train in, um, in culture and diversity. Drivers will and shift supervisors will need to attend driver's training. Drivers, shift supervisors, and dispatchers must complete safety training as well. Application um, development, we will develop the application. There will be training and routine maintenance. Operational costs are the dispatching office um, lease, as we will need a location to dispatch the vehicles, utilities, salaries, and vehicle fleet and maintenance. Performance monitoring. Performance prior to launch date will be measured by qual quantified delivered data, making sure that 100% of the staff is trained and certified at the different levels. The application will have a two-test phase to troubleshoot and any problems prior to launch date. Ford is responsible for cultural diversity training, customer relations management, data analysis, employment labor laws, local and U.S. Shutlist is responsible for vehicle maintenance, dispatching vehicles, safety training, safety and training all drivers. We hope that you have enjoyed this case study on Ford and Dynamic Shuttle in India. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask.